Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at Space Race from Board Cubator. This is a competitive card game where, as the name implies, thematically, you are each taking control of a different space agency from around the world, like NASA, the Soviet Union, the European Union, and you are trying to develop technologies and breakthroughs and uh, hire uh, certain people and have propaganda in order to promote your space agency and get yourself out there and uh, outpace the other countries uh, before they can make it out there first. It sort of jumps all over the timeline uh, so that you have artwork depicting the like, you know, the moon landing and you have artwork uh, from the modern day of like entrepreneurs um, like like Stephen Hawking and things like and scientists like Stephen Hawking and things like that so the way the gameplay works is you're basically playing cards using them in different ways it's all about action efficiency and card efficiency and moving them between different zones so on and so forth let me go ahead and give you a brief look at how the game works then we're going to come back and I will tell you what I think Space Race is a competitive game for two to four players or one player with a special variant. Each player is a director of a new space agency trying to develop and grow your space program to outpace your competitors. The game takes place over seven rounds in which you'll be trying to earn development points by building up your agency, maintaining successful laboratories, and outperforming your competitors in breakthroughs. Whoever has the most points at the end of seven rounds is the winner. To set up the game, first shuffle the deck of Space Race cards, draw four to six cards from it, depending on the number of players, and lay them out in rows or columns by type, which we'll get back to later. This is known as the Universe. Leave space on the side for the Unexplored Universe, which gets two cards from the deck face down. Every player gets a set of control cards, which are all identical except for the backs. One player also gets the Initiative Marker. Starting with that person, each player will draw three, four, or five cards from the deck, respectively, so that people who are later in turn order get more cards. Players have two main personal play areas. The Space Agency is where you'll be playing control cards and space race cards. The Laboratory is basically a holding tank for cards that couldn't find their way into the Agency for some reason, though some abilities may let you move them there later. Cards in the Laboratory will be worth points at the end, however. Every round of Space Race represents a decade and is broken into three phases. Phase 1 is managing the agency. Each player will take a control card from their hand and place it face down. In later rounds, you'll place that card on top of previously played control cards, which are moved up slightly so that they're all showing. The point is that the current control card will always line up with your space agency row. Once everyone has done this, flip up any face-down unexplored cards in the universe and add them to their proper columns, as well as flipping up everyone's chosen control card for the round. That leads into Phase 2, Developing the Agency. The players are going to go through the five stages of their control cards. There are three control cards each for the four types of cards, Propaganda, Technology, Space Program, and Breakthrough. Each control card does two things. It allows you to gain cards of a certain type from the universe in various ways, and it lets you activate abilities on cards which match the stripe on the control card. Let's talk briefly about the Space Race cards before we go any further. Your main goal in this game is to efficiently get the best cards from the universe into your agency and then use the abilities on those cards to place more cards in the agency or your hand or swap out cards, etc. It's fair to say that the majority of abilities on cards in the game involve moving other cards from zone to zone. Each type of card has its own bent, but two stand out. Propaganda have a special subtype called leaders that can give you powerful abilities, many of them permanent, so long as they're in your agency, but you can only have one at a time. Breakthrough cards have special symbols denoting them as belonging to one of four categories. This is relevant for endgame scoring. You want to have the most of as many symbols as you can. When you place cards into your space agency, which is the area in front of you, they will line up with the control cards you played for the round. You can only activate abilities that line up with the stripe that began on that current control card. This whole thing is called a stage. These abilities might be reusable, showing up on the left side of the card or one-time use, which activate and then are covered up with the next card in your agency and may be uncovered later to use again. Abilities will let you draw cards from the deck, take specific types of cards from the universe, put cards in your agency, put cards in your laboratory, swap cards between these areas, and so on. Players will go down each stage one by one, from propaganda to breakthrough, and anyone who has one or more activated stripe abilities for that stage can use one of them at a time. 
The order of play is determined by the total level of the stage. Add the level number on the control card to any levels on the connected cards that match that stage. If multiple players have multiple abilities to activate in the same stage, each player does one at a time, going around until all the abilities for the stage have been used. Then you move on to the next stage and do it again. The final stage is always bureaucracy. If your cards have these abilities, they are mandatory, and every player must resolve them in order starting with the player with the initiative marker. Phase 3 of each round is prepping for the next decade, that is, the next round. First, starting with the player with the initiative marker, everyone has a chance to add as many cards from their hand as they want to the universe face down. Since the hand limit is 7, you may need to place cards there whether you like it or not, but otherwise it's optional. After everyone has decided, shuffle all the face down cards in the universe, draw one or two based on the number of players, and add them face up to their proper rows, leaving the rest in the unexplored universe. Lastly, move the initiative marker to the next player in clockwise order and begin the new round from phase one. After the seventh round, end the game and determine everyone's development point score. Add up every level number in your agency, but not your control cards. Get one point for every card in your laboratory, regardless of their levels. Finally, look at all your breakthrough cards in your agency and add up each of the category symbols individually. For every category in which you have the most symbols, you get six points, as do any players that are tied with you, so friendly ties. Add up all of these development points and whoever has the most is the winner. There are two special variants to the game. The Cold War variant, which has more strict guidelines on how you can score points, and the JFK solo variant, where you play alone against an AI-controlled player. But that, essentially, is Space Race. Well, this is a pretty decent game, and I think that a lot of that has to do with the theme. You know, I started off talking about the theme, and even though I don't think that the theme is totally wedded to the mechanics, I mean, it is a uh, it is a pretty abstract card game in a certain sense. I mean, when I mentioned in the beginning how you're basically just moving cards from zone to zone. However, the fact that you are playing as these space agencies and the, the theming on the cards, not just you know, taking stuff from modern day or, or, uh, or recent history and putting them on the cards, uh, but also doing it in a very nice way. I mean, the artwork is good, and the, the design aesthetic is very clever as well, especially on things like the control cards, which I hope came across very well on uh, the preview section or the uh, overview section where the, you had them lined up. They just had made some very clever design choices here, and that helps. It, it helps bring the theme to the game and it does as you're laying out the cards in your agency and you some of them you have to put in your laboratory and you get these personalities to give you special bonuses and abilities it does help you feel as if you are competing with the other players not just in an abstract card game but also in you know getting to space uh in the best way that a game that's this light can do um and i don't think this game is overwhelmingly light i mean it is a a, a simple to learn card game mostly simple to learn I don't think it will take you that long, and it's certainly not that long to play. To, to the game's credit, it moves very quickly. But where it goes as far as the complexity, um, it can be difficult to learn the first time. It certainly was for us because uh, you the whole concept of figuring out how the stages work together with your control card is both pretty innovative, but also can be difficult to wrap your head around at first. And I don't think the game is helped very much by the icon system. This is a, a problem that other card games that I would put in this broad genre of card games uh, has an issue with. Um, not that I think this is like games, exactly like games like you know, like Race for the Galaxy or um, Glory to Rome or some of those games that are very similar to Glory to Rome. It is different in a lot of ways, but I put it in that same broad category of using cards in different ways action efficiency, very uh, low margin for error with, with what you're doing with the cards, putting them in different zones, and, and so on. Cards can mean one thing here, they could be just worth points here, they can have different ability here, and so on and so forth. Um, but in that same way, uh, as some, several of those games have the issue of just using icons in lieu of text to mean, uh, to, have, to relay a ton of information. Uh, and so the first game, we were definitely referring to the rule book a lot because sometimes the icons are not totally clear. Now, once you get all of that, it's an easy in. And our subsequent game was much easier and fast-paced. And that's why I say the game plays very quickly. Um, I mean, 
I would say an hour to be safe. But, I mean, it, it, I've never... It felt like I was uh, bogged down just waiting for my turns to go by. So I could easily see this being, you know, less than that. Uh, we just play slow. <laughs> I think it's pretty well documented by now. Uh, so that really helps. And again, I've always liked games where you're using cards in different ways. This isn't totally like that. This isn't like Imperial Settlers where I can like literally put a card somewhere else and it activates a completely different type of ability. But in this case, you can put a card down and never use one of its abilities because you didn't play the right control card. Conversely, you can set up combos to where you're using a ton of abilities all at once or the ability that was dormant before is now used because you you played a different control card. And that's what I said helps with the theme as well because just because you build a space agency and build a center and do all these different things uh, doesn't mean that you're actually using all those assets at once, but later on you might when you issue commands to do so and activate those assets. So that's where the theme helps a bit. And maybe that's a stretch. But (laughs) it does really help there. Um, And that whole control card thing uh, is interesting, too, because you you got one chance. (laughs) You have seven rounds of the game, and was there, well, there's four categories, so there's 12 cards, and, but you're, once you use a card, that's it. You're never getting it back. There's one card, I think, that lets you, one control card that lets you swap back. Maybe there's another ability card I didn't, uh, I can't remember, I didn't see. But you, other than those special, special circumstances, you use a control card, and that's it. So this is where the action efficiency comes in. It's very critical that you use it at the right time. If you use it and it only activates one ability in the chain, eh, I mean, it's not really that great because other players might fly ahead of you at that point. (laughs) So you really need to worry about that. And then they throw in other little things in the mix that you have to constantly be on the lookout for as you're worrying about these actions, like the uh, the breakthrough cards, which are your typical little bit of set collection thrown in (laughs) to the mix, but a compelling one at that. Again, margins are very small here. You're not talking about having dozens of symbols. Uh, And because there's friendly ties, I like that. It actually encourages you to do that when you wouldn't be like, ah, oh, that guy's already got one, I mean, and I don't know, what's the point? Well, now there's a point. <laughs> so I think that that helps a lot too. Uh, so there's a lot of little neat flourishes in it. Again, I don't like the iconography that much, and um, it, it can be brutal. I mean, if you are, <laughs> the margins are difficult here, If you, the margin for error. If you screw up too much, if you're not efficient with your cards, you're going to fall behind. Uh, and I, there is, to a degree, this sort of uh, gap between the theme and the mechanics, as, as many of these types of games will have. Unless you're, you know, I've always said that if you're not uh, a big, sprawling, miniature laden game, it's going to be really hard to feel the theme at all times. But I think that for a light, a lightish, I keep saying that card game. This does adequately well with portraying the theme. But the gameplay is the important part, uh, the most important part, and that does shine through as a very good, quick uh, game with some uh, surprise complexity to it. Uh, so that is Space Race from Board Cubator, which is fun to say. Uh, I, I do recommend it. If def- Definitely, if you're, if I, I mentioned before, that broad genre of card games where you're you're using cards in an efficient way in different ways. This fits uh, very nicely into that category, so if you're really into those, check it out. <laughs>